Can we just say that? Another kids count report placed New Mexico at the bottom of the rankings of childhood well-being. That's three of the last seven reports, and Giovanna, the executive director of New Mexico Voices for Children, that's James Jimenez, as you know, says the damage was done over the last 10 years due to underfunding. It'll take a sustained effort and a lot more money to undo that. Do you, do you agree with that, first of all? So I think mm -hmm. that de definitely the last 10 years, particularly the years in the Martinez administration, didn't mm -hmm. help. Um, there mm -hmm. were some things that, that didn't happen, although she did get credit in some of the news coverage mm -hmm. for, for um, some of the things, expanding pre-K sure. and, yep. and um, the Medicaid expansion. So, mm -hmm. um, so I think that we do need to look at this in, in a historical view. So. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Definitely pinpointing some of the downfalls of the administration uh, is is valid, um, but you know. But how far back do we go with that? Because the governor before her didn't exactly move the needle. The well, governor the before is, him didn't exactly yeah, move the needle. Well, do you know what I mean? I it's, think the point is that it's yeah. not just up to the governor, right? Yeah, so yeah, so it's a relationship between the governor, the legislature, right, and the community. The business mm -hmm. community has plays a big role, right. or could. Yeah. Um, and so it it do, it doesn't just come down to uh, to the governor, mm -hmm. and there are some really deep um, issues here that can be looked at. And mm -hmm. I think it's worth mentioning that how are we measuring mm -hmm. child well-being? And mm -hmm. the NEE Casey Foundation has been doing this a great job at it. And New Mexico Voices for Children is the new is the New Mexico you know mm -hmm. arm of that, or they they do the Kids Count Report for mm -hmm. the for the foundation. Um, how, and I love that we're looking at child well-being or, or well-being for New Mexico through the lens of child well-being. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. However, I think there could be some indicators that we're missing in terms of looking at child well-being. And a couple of those are um, something near and dear to my heart, mm -hmm. family-friendly workplaces. Mm -hmm. So um, are parents able to balance uh, child care and bringing up their kids and working. That's mm -hmm. a huge issue yep. that frankly has not received the attention it needs. And so family friendly workplaces is one. The status of women is another. Mm. So equal pay, you know, um, whether women are uh, getting the support they need in domestic violence issues. They're, this is all interrelated, right? Sure. We can't just look at, at children mm -hmm. as a uh, a standalone. Right. They're they're very connected to to the support from the parents. So. Tom, Giovanna makes an interesting point because the rankings are based on 16 indicators under four major domains. Those four being economic well-being, education, health, and family and community, as Giovanna just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to have well children, it seems pretty clear we have to have well families. To be a little flip with the wording, but you know what I mean. Yeah. One has to happen before the other, it seems to me, and that was Giovanna's point there as well. Oh, uh, Giovanna mm -hmm. brings up some excellent points with yeah. respect to you know uh, family-friendly uh, workplaces. Absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting of those four different indicators that you just mentioned. Uh, the last two, as far as family and community and health, mm -hmm. tend to be our strongest areas. Isn't that interesting? Uh, yeah. But it's still not anything to hang our hat on. It's health being the strongest of those, which I think is interesting. But mm -hmm. also, when you look at the education, when you uh, you know, according to this report. 80% uh, of eighth graders are proficient in, are not proficient in math. 75% right. uh, are not proficient in reading. And that's at the eighth grade level. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what that says is that you know we have a systemic issue uh, which is starting to be remedied. Uh, I shouldn't say starting. Everybody's been trying to right. you know, take different bites of the apple. We're going to talk about that. Fix I'm that. Sure you bringing that up and stuff. But yeah. uh, but you know so it, but I'll, I'll save my comments for later. Then. Sure. No yeah. sweat. Harry, we can wind a little bit of that into you know we have some resources flowing into the system now right. the last session uh, you know we had for the first time in years yeah. in years and years and again the same point we all know what happened the last 10 years or, or if you choose to 25 or 30 or 40 right. you know for education here how is it we get out of this morass is it just money is it a different kind of a commitment is mm -hmm. it what Giovanna was pointing out that we have to get families whole first before we can talk about well, children fam families or, and communities mm -hmm. whole and it's really a uh, all of the above uh, sort of approach so right. It's absolutely uh, clear that we have a lot of public policy uh, in the United States that doesn't recognize the effects, uh, doesn't recognize the importance of families, mm -hmm. and particularly the importance of what uh, mothers do. So I was listening to a BBC documentary mm -hmm. driving uh, down here, uh, and the uh, person made the point that if a, a woman uh, uses a formula to feed her uh, infant, that's counted in GDP, but if she breastfeeds, which has all these positive effects, it doesn't get 
get counted in a That's GDP. Fascinating. No and kidding. think about all of the things that are required to go into you know helping a, a woman uh, who's working also uh, continue uh, breastfeeding. I've often uh, said that we really need to view this as a public health uh, problem. Mm -hmm. We have to look not just at what's happening with uh, families, and families are facing an enormous amount of stress uh, in Albuquerque in uh, rural areas, but we have a lot of public health issues uh, in uh, communities. So if you go to the rural communities in the uh, state, what about access to mental health care? What about access to primary and specialty uh, care? There's a lot of things that would really uh, move the uh, needle in terms of welfare for uh, children that we've not had the money for, but That's we right. also really haven't had the right lens for. That's right. You know, I love that point because, Janice, I've had so many people over the years tell me, we cannot fix any of this stuff for the children's health or family health unless you can walk in the door virtually free or for very little money to solve your problems and statewide. You, you gotta have a system, just walk in the door and immediately get after something. And that's the level of commitment we're talking about here. I would know. say, well, he made my point. Mm -hmm. Maybe the film incentives should be applied to healthcare. Why not? Uh, and, and, yeah. and, and it would change the dynamic. But I wanna go back, Please. Uh, because you're making some really good points. So with this report, it's not quite as it's been framed. There are 16 indicators, mm -hmm. 12, saw improvement, mm -hmm. 12. Mm -hmm. Two, the government actually has no input on. The most important one and most dramatic ones was how many new single family homes there are. Ah, yes. Very interesting. Yes. And the other one, which I think is starting to come up, and I think in the next uh, decade you'll see mm -hmm. that it grows, unfortunately, is low birth weight babies. Oh, wow which may well be related to our opioid crisis. So here's the good news. Mm -hmm. New Mexico, in New Mexico, improved, improved in 12 categories. And in one category, it was astounding. Mm -hmm. uh, teen births are down dramatically. Mm -hmm. Lots of people have worked on this. Yep. Good job. Yep. But the other way to look at this is, while we are doing better inside, mm -hmm. the states around us, are moving in leaps and bounds, mm -hmm. and we are not Thank you. Up. That's an important yeah. point. And that, that is what this report tells me is, right. yes, yes, we are making strides, but we're not keeping up. Let's pick up on that. That's an interesting point. We are making strides, Giovanna. We, you know, there's some things, it may be one, two percent here or there, but it's on the upside. <laughs> At least yeah. it's on the positive. Is there enough to build on here? Is there something you're seeing, some ray of light here to oh, yeah, build absolutely. on? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay. it's, it's good to dig into the report, right, not just say, well, we're 50th and mm -hmm. so everything's terrible, mm -hmm. but actually look at where are we doing well and can we, can we, uh, mm -hmm shift that even further. Mm -hmm. And as, um, as was reported, James Jimenez of New Mexico Voices um, really wants to see a commitment from the governor and the legislature now working together to, to really move this forward. And mm -hmm. it's, um, we have an opportunity with the new early childhood That's right. and mm -hmm. care department. So I think the governor has a real opportunity here to, to really pinpoint and focus on, Good point. on some issues. Yeah, just to torture the metaphor, we have a moonshot Right, mm -hmm. that was how it was announced during the legislative session. It's in the air. When can we expect to see some return on the dollar, so to speak? These things can take years sometimes. That's gonna be a difficulty to see if we can kind of get there. We're out of time with our line panelists this week and go to the Facebook page for our, find our warm up conversation about drag queens reading to kids at public libraries. You can also find our Facebook Live conversation about Juneteenth this week.